The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church, Iowa City. We're glad you're with us this morning. I remind everyone that you have the opportunity to give joyfully, either by mailing your offerings in or by using the access on the webpage. There are a couple of announcements this morning. There will be a congregational meeting on Sunday, the 31st of January, at which time we will elect two elders and receive reports from all of the committees. Story time will continue this week at 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning. The link to that is in the daily mailing. Session meets Tuesday night. And a reminder that Jer the Jeremiah Justice Initiative reconvenes beginning on Sunday, the 24th of January. Now will you join me in singing, please? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Wherever we are, we are gathered in the light of Christ and gladly accept God's invitation to worship. I believe this is Jesus. Come and see, come and see. 
The light of God shines in his face. Come and see, come and see. He offers all his pardoning grace. Come and see, come and see. Having praised the holiness of God, we must also face the sinful state of the world and of our lives, confessing before God and one another. Nothing can be hidden from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, whose wisdom is endless, whose mercy is great. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. God of abundant mercy, you embodied love for us in the life of Jesus Christ. You ate with sinners and shared with outcasts. You loved with boldness and healed with grace. Forgive us, O oh God, when we do not trust your love, when we doubt whether we are worthy of your care. Forgive us, O oh God, when we try to cheapen love, when we limit it to shallow feelings instead of bold actions. Help us, O oh God, when we cannot feel your love, when we are isolated, afraid, and unable to see your presence. Forgive us, O oh God, of the ways we fall short. Free us to try again and let your love lead the way.
Those who trust in God will renew their strength. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow faint. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have been reconciled to God, now we can act as God's peacemakers in the world. The peace of Christ be with you. As we pray the prayer for illumination, we ask the Holy Spirit to shed wisdom and understanding on us through the reading and hearing of the scripture. God of shining splendor, your voice makes the earth tremble in wonder. Overshadow us with your spirit so that we may hear your word and live as faithful disciples and covenant people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. A reading from the Old Testament, Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Samuel was a 12-year-old boy who lived in the temple with a priest named Eli and learned about God. Eli took care of Samuel, and Samuel helped take care of Eli because Eli was almost blind. One night, something special happened. As Samuel slept in the temple, he heard a voice call out, Samuel! Samuel thought it was Eli calling, so he jumped from his bed. Here I am, Samuel answered as he ran to Eli. Here I am. I came because you called me. But I Eli shook his head. I didn't call you. Go back to your bed. Samuel did as he was told and fell asleep quickly. A little while later, the voice called again. Samuel. This time, Samuel was more tired and crawled out of his bed slowly. In Eli's room, Samuel rubbed his eyes, scratched his tummy, and said with a yawn, I'm Go here back because you bed. called me. I'm here because you called me. I didn't call you. When this happened a third time, Eli thought to himself, Aha! It must be God who is calling Samuel. Eli told Samuel, who was now very confused and sleepy, if you are called again, just say, God, I hear you, and I will do whatever you want. When the, vo when the voice called again, Samuel did as Eli told him. It was God, and God had many things to say to Samuel. Even though he was only 12, Samuel wanted to serve God. With God's help, Samuel grew up to share many messages from God. People all over Israel knew Samuel as God's trusted prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today's epistle reading is from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. It begins, we're reading from chapter 6, verse 12. I have the freedom to do anything, but everything is not helpful. I have the freedom to do anything, but I won't be controlled by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food, and yet God will do away with both. The body isn't for sexual immortality, but for the Lord, for the Lord is for the body. God has raised the Lord and will raise us through his power. Don't you know that your bodies are parts of Christ? So then, should I take parts of Christ and make them a part of someone else who is sleeping around? No way. Do you know that anyone who is joined to someone who is sleeping around is one body with that person? The scriptures say the two will become one flesh. The one who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Avoid sexual immorality. Every sin that a person can do is committed outside the body, except for those who engage in sexual immorality, commit sin against their own bodies. Or don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Don't you know that you have the Holy Spirit from God and you belong to yourselves? You have been brought, bought and paid for, so honor God with your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson today is John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked Jesus, How do you know me? And Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. The Gospel of the Lord. I read to you this morning from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. That was a church that he founded, and then after a few years, he left. While he was away, he heard that that church had run into some internal bickering. The letter that he wrote, the first one, is a response to that bickering. Now, they've indicated to him what their problems were, but he does not address those problems when he begins his letters. We read today from the sixth <clears throat> chapter of that letter. He still isn't addressing their concerns. Now, as I read that letter, you heard a lot about sexuality and sexual immorality. I hate to disappoint you, but that's not what I'm preaching about this morning. <clears throat> what I am preaching about <clears throat> is the point that Paul was making in this part of his letter. He said at the beginning of this passage, I am free to do anything, but everything is not beneficial. Let me say that again. I am free to do anything, but everything 
is not beneficial. Now this morning, because of what's happened in our world, in our country, what's happened in Washington, D.C., it's important to revisit what Paul said. I am free to do anything, but everything is not beneficial. I am free this morning to preach with righteous indignation, with a tone that reflects that indignation. But I'm not going to do that this morning because I don't think we need heat right now. It's all right to feel anger, but we don't want to be defined by our anger. Let it help motivate us inside to do better and to be more perceptive. I can do anything. I could, uh, let's see, I could preach about politics, but I'm not going to do that because I realize that many people are feeling let down by their fellow citizens. I realize there are others who feel let down by any number of politicians. I don't need to talk about politics. What I need to do is to be your pastor who acknowledges how deeply painful this is and the hurt that you may be experiencing. I am free to point a finger of blame, but I'm not going to do that either because while looking at others and blaming them and reaching conclusions might feel cathartic on the inside, it often is misdirected. Instead, I choose to leave the investigation of what happened to the professionals in whom I trust. I am free to do anything, but everything is not beneficial. Now, there are some things I can and will do this morning. One of those things is to acknowledge how awful that scene was, where we saw a person in the Capitol carrying a flag of another country, of the Confederacy. And what makes that so painful, especially for people in this congregation, is we're trying to learn how to be anti-racist. And here, on the widest possible stage, is a flag declaring that people of color don't belong here, are not first-class citizens. It says to me that we're on the right track as we work this year in all facets of our organization to try and become anti-racist. That's a good step, but it suggests to me that this year isn't enough. We need to do that this year and in 2022, 23, 24. We need to do it as long as we're here. For don't we all hurt for the people of color who were slammed so viciously in that demonstration. I can and will do other things because there were people who were making it clear in that event, in that insurrection, that Jews were not welcome. But that's not where we stand as a people of faith. We do not support anti-Semitism. We are in the same family of faith. We come from the Abrahamic tradition. In Judaism, Abraham is one of the patriarchs. In Christianity, Abraham is one of the patriarchs. We are family. And doesn't it make you sick to see somebody in our family attacked? We need to stand in solidarity with our cousins, with our kin, with members of our family. There are other things I can do and will do. I do want to speak about politicians, 
But I want to speak about politicians this way. I want to speak about the fact that the women and the men who represent you and me in Washington had their lives threatened. And I feel really badly about that. So badly that I want to say that the next time I'm tempted to flippantly say, oh, nothing ever happens in Washington, I hope I remember that something does happen in Washington. And it makes other people angry when our representatives are doing their jobs. Oh, I can say things, and I want to say things. I want to talk about the policeman. I want to grieve that Brian Sicknick was murdered. I want to grieve for the other police officers. No one department of government is perfect, and the police aren't perfect, but I trust in the police department. And I'm saddened that those who would serve the public good were attacked in this way. Now, you notice that what I have done here this morning is I've really been talking about feelings, what it felt like when we were watching television, and the anger and the upsetness, and what it felt like to see people attacked. That's because sometimes it is even difficult to read the scriptures until we've gone through a process of talking about our own feelings. And so I'm sort of reflecting mine, hoping they will help you get in touch with your feelings, because if we're not in touch with our feelings, it's also hard to be in touch with God and with one another. Now, what happened was frightening. But I can also tell you this morning that I live in hope because I have seen peacemakers at work. I have seen peacemakers not only in the life of Martin Luther King Jr., but I have seen peacemakers in communities like ours. I was in a place once that had a youth program. And the kids would get together once a week. But there were two in this group who just didn't seem to fit in. Everything they did elicited criticism, either from their peers or from some of the adults. They also threw the food. They talked, well, they said things that were, let's just say, offensive. So it was problematic. But as I went week after week, I noticed that there were two people, and they were very sharp. One of them made sure, when those two kids showed up, made sure to walk over. And she walked over and just lightly put her hand on their shoulders and said, it's so nice to have you here today. And then I watched as the evening's activities went on. I noticed how careful she was to um, rephrase some of their sharp comments. I noticed how she sat next to certain kids to be a buffer. What I noticed and what I realized was this person was using her skills as a teacher to help make that a place of peace where everybody could be integrated in. It took three months, but after three months, those two kids came into the meeting with smiles and anticipation, and they were no longer estranged, but they could sit next to anybody they wanted. And come to think about it, aren't the men and women who teach doing peacemaking every single day? Because if you don't have peace in the classroom, if you haven't helped children, to become effective in their social lives, then they can't learn. So I've got lots of hope because there are men and women in this congregation and in most of our congregations who are doing peacemaking every day. But that's what we can see around us. And 
you might say, but how does that pertain to what happened to the insurrection in Washington? Well, it pertains in this way. If we don't have a foundation for peace, then we will never solve peace at larger levels like we saw in the insurrection. Now, I want to say this morning that you have a way that you can contribute to that foundation of peacemaking. Because one of the messages I believe that we need to hear is there are some people, not all, but some people who are saying, you're not hearing me. And they want to be heard. In fact, I would go so far as to say I believe that there are in all of our relationships Maybe it's with somebody at the office. Maybe it's with a child or a parent. Maybe it's with a cousin where they are on one side of the political divide and you're on the other side. And what happens when you have conversations with them? The conversations quickly uh, deteriorate into a battle with the result of hurt feelings, and often people wind up leaving the event that they're at and even not talking with e each other for months. We need to be peacemakers. It's possible. I know you're going to think I'm crazy for saying this. It's possible to overcome the barriers between people on whatever side they're on. And here are the steps. Invite the person that you are feeling alienated from because of such divergent points of view. Invite them to have a conversation with you about whatever that is that is between you. But then say, in this conversation, I am going to listen to you. I'm not going to interrupt you. I will listen to you for as long as you need me to listen. If I can hear it and while we're here, fine. If we need to meet two or three times, I will listen. I'm not going to judge you. I will ask a question of clarification if I don't understand anything, but I am going to just receive what you have to say. But as, if we do this, I'd like you to know that I can only do so much. And so if we get into a situation where I am accusing you, or I'm blaming you, or you're blaming me, I'm going to ask if we can rein that in and move away from that, because that hurts. And I do not want to say anything to hurt you, and I don't want you to hurt me. And I suspect if you have that kind of conversation, you're not going to reach agreement. But I think you may come to the place where whoever you're talking with has one set of facts and you have another. And then you say, oh, by the way, when we come to the point where we disagree about the facts, let's agree to work together to find a way to come up with facts that we can agree on. Maybe I read what you read, and you read what I read, and then we find something that neither of us reads until we can agree on what becomes facts. That's hard work. It's very hard to listen to somebody with whom you have strong disagreements. But consider this, if you do that, what you're free to do in making that invitation is you're free to say to the other person, I want to stay in relationship with you. You're free to imply to them, I think we can work this through. Let me put a parenthesis on this, though. And that is, if a conversation like this is going to happen, Maybe we need to also agree that neither party will be evangelical. By that, I mean this person won't try and convert 
this person to their point of view, and vice versa. We can make peace in those very strained relationships. And when we make peace in our lives we're, with others, we're helping to set the foundation for a more just society. Because how can we reach for justice when we cannot talk with each other? We recognize on Monday Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. He called us to work for justice. Maybe one of the small steps in working for justice is to give up what we're holding so tightly to in favor of reaching out to somebody and in the invitation to talk saying, you're important and I care. Paul said, we are free to do anything. Let's be free to be peacemakers, to reconcile with people. I have hope that we can do that. And while we're doing that here, because here is where we are, I trust that those people who have other responsibilities at other levels in society, particularly in government, will help us understand what happened in our nation's capital and will hold people responsible. And I also have hope that if we reach out and learn how to make peace with someone else, we will find that some of the pain of what we've experienced witnessing that attempted insurrection, some of that pain will pass because we'll learn that we're not so helpless. Christ has given us the gift of life, the gift of love, and the gift of words. Let's choose them in a way that makes peace. Amen. Responding to the word proclaimed, we affirm our faith in the holy triune God. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of the human mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful people. The power of God's love in Christ transform the world that discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. May we be of one heart as we say the prayers of the people. Holy God, you search our hearts and know us. In this dark night of our souls in which it feels like what makes our country what it is, is threatened. In which the number of people infected by COVID and who die from it continues to grow. In which the epidemic of loneliness has only worsened these past 10 months. Oh God, how long will this darkness continue? Grant us reprieve from wave after wave of sad, tragic, horrible news. Let your light shine not only on us, but on all people so that the blues we feel now can be transformed into spirits of joy. Bring an end to the pandemic and to the isolation from family and friends. Your knowledge is of us is too wonderful. Hear our cries. Grant, O oh God, the gift of healing to all who are caught up in the insurrection, legislators, capital employees, police, unsuspecting demonstrators, journalists, families worrying about their loved ones. Turn us all to new, constructive paths for communicating protesting, and solving grievances. 
all-knowing and all-caring God. Walk with the family of Officer Brian Sicknick in their grief. Guide investigators to quickly determine who may not have been as faithful to their calling as Officer Sicknick was, so that their colleagues may have the mantle of mistrust removed from them and return with new commitment and pride to their calling to serve public safety. Patient God, if we've been too smug thinking this happens in other countries but not in our country, change our hearts, open our eyes, and renew our commitment to be active, creative participants in civic affairs because we are a country that has a dream and the dream is not yet realized. God of justice, bring relief to the pain in President Trump's life. Give leaders in the District of Columbia wisdom sufficient to protect President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris through the inauguration and during their terms in office. Bless all who serve in our community on boards and committees and councils and those who help recruit and support leadership through political parties. God, you've equipped us to be a responsible people. Creator God, we know what our realm is like and at this moment, imagine now with longing the coming of your realm as we pray, saying, Our parent who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is only one Lord and God from whom all things come and for whom we live. We bring our offering with joy and thanksgiving. We have responded to God's call by giving our offerings to God. Now we give our thanks through the prayer of dedication. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus Christ, for the gifts of grace we have received from your hand. Now send us forth to reflect your light, proclaiming your saving death and resurrection until you come again in glory. Amen. My charge to you is to take whatever anger, frustration, shock, whatever feeling, sadness that you have about what happened in Washington, take that to God. And once having taken it there, 
maybe you will feel enough renewed that you can then contribute to the resolution and be a peacemaker. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord be gracious and kind to you. May the Lord's face be upon you and grant you peace.